The premise is uh, basically five detectives in, uh, in Manhattan um, and their day-to-day -day lives. Um, my character in particular is having a midlife crisis um, and is trying to juggle uh, the um, tougher aspects of his job because he's a, you know, sort of an elite detective who's an adrenaline junkie. He wants the, the hardest cases, the toughest cases, everything from murder to rape, whatever the top case is, he wants that. Um, it's not necessarily something that he gets assigned all the time. Sometimes they get assigned very ridiculous, silly cases that they still have to pursue. And at the same time, he's trying to juggle his personal life, which is a mess. It's about a group of people that work together, going through all the madness of New York City um, every day in their lives, their families, their relationships toward, with each other and their families, and friends, and the situations they find themselves in. My character, Frank, is uh, he's the favorite guy I've ever played so far on anything. He's, uh, I haven't met him yet. I mean, actually, there, there's, there's a fella that I'm loosely modeled after, I guess. And uh, he's been on the force for quite some time. And uh, I think he's one of the policeman's favorites. And uh, it's just, it's really different. And I've played a cop on TV shows before, but I've never been a detective. So I feel like I've graduated to a gold shield. And uh, this guy is, uh, he's got, I think he's got about 700 days left on the job. And he's counted them all off in his head. You know, and if there's uh, something dangerous or something really exciting, he just assumed pass it off to one of the younger guys. And uh, I guess I feel like that in real life, too. It's about a precinct of cops, but not so much the actual cop and robbers thing, but what they do when they're not uh, hunting for robbers. Some of the off-time stuff, while they're sitting in the car in the office and their lives and the things they do. Uh, I was working with uh, a cop that I was doing research, Mike Charles, on Thomas Crown Affair uh, a couple years ago and decided that I thought uh, his life uh, on the force and the, the stuff I saw the cops doing when I was doing the research with him was really interesting and I wanted to develop a show about it. Not necessarily a show for myself, but just a show. And then by the time uh, Peter Tolan came on board, who uh, was a writer I never thought we'd get because I thought he was, first of all, way too busy, and second of all, I didn't think he wanted to come back to television to do uh, this kind of a project. He fell in love with the idea. Um, and so by the time we saw the first draft of the script, um, I thought, this is going to be a great guy to play. You know, and I could also picture the other people, a couple of the other actors that I knew that would be perfect for the roles. So, um, and here we are. That's the only female in there. It's sort of like she's joined a fraternity. So you kind of have to gear up every day for the fraternity element of it. She's pretty tough. She's from the Bronx. I don't think she has a lot of time for all of the antics that go on there. She has a child. So I think it's sort of like romper room at work and romper room at home. And um, the kindnesses that she gets from them are very subtle. And I think she really appreciates it. <laughs> it's a great ensemble cast. Uh, Dennis has been really wonderful about uh, sh sharing the workload, sharing the, the laughs. I mean, uh, he's a very, very funny man, but uh, he's a bright man, too, and he involves every character in the cast so that it gives people a variety to watch for. You can like the show for many, many different reasons. You, should al you can also like it for many different characters. There's no one alike, and everyone brings their own special brand to it. And it's an ensemble cast that every single person is thrilled to be here. You know, I've worked on shows before where people would rather be someplace else. They'd rather be doing movies. They'd rather be doing the theater. Uh, this show, we all want to do this. We all want to be here. We're glad to be here. And we're really thrilled about the chance to work together. Everybody's nuts on the show, which is nice. Dennis's character's uh, popping pills and kind of looking at the rules as a suggestion. Um, Lenny's character, is uh, he's got like 600 days before he's retired. He doesn't want any problems. My character, Tommy's kind of fighting for a little uh, recognition and trying to make his bones. And uh, Bill Nunn's character, is uh, the married guy, kind of straight, and uh, he's dealing with all this other stuff. And Diane's character is just trying to keep it all together, I'm guessing. She's like the only sane voice in this place. But she snaps. That's what's great about it. They were doing an episode now where she beats up a perp. How cool is that? I think it's just a, whether a person's funny or not, whether they get it. Um, I think, uh, you know, in Adam's case, he's a terrific actor. Um, and uh, when he came into audition for that role, he was 
I, mean, I thought he looked like the guy that we had in mind. And, uh, and from his first audition, um, I thought, geez, this guy's really, he's got terrific timing. I didn't know he was a comedian. Um, and Lenny, I've, where I've worked with before, he was in Monument Ave, and he was in Two If By Sea, and he was uh, an actor that you know, I knew could pull this role off. Um, and he's doing a role that's really the complete opposite of what he's like in real life um, and what his, his stand-up comedy act is like. It's, uh, but I knew he could do it because I know him. Um, so when he came in, when I first read the script, I thought, this is a role that Lenny's going to be able to nail in a heartbeat, which he's doing. I mean, he's, he's comedy gold. It's a great ensemble, you know, thing happening. Um, and it's funny. It's genuinely funny. I mean, I, when, I, when I first read it, I laughed out loud. You know, and uh, I think I got a pretty good uh, funny bone. And uh, when something strikes me, you know, especially if, if it strikes you funny enough to laugh out loud, you know it's got to be, you know, because you can sit there and, you know, read a you know, wonderful book and sort of chuckle on the train, you know, <laughs> and be polite about it. But then there's things that, that are really funny. <laughs> and just, you've got to let it out because it's like, it's that good, you know, it's, uh, and it's that resonant, you know. So uh, I think this, this has a lot of resonance. It's hilarious, you know, and uh, it's extremely well written. It's extremely well acted. Um, you know, the guys on the show, you know, Dennis and Bill and Keith David and Lenny, I mean, they're all just funny down to their socks and they're just very, very talented actors. There's a lot of things about cops I think people will learn uh, from this show. If they're not typical heroic television cops, it's not like every time you see an episode of this show, they're solving, you know, some great mystery in a half hour's time. So I think the people will be surprised by what it's like to be a cop day to day. But also, as human beings, you know, there's a lot of stuff that people can glom onto and, and uh, recognize from any walk of life, you know, um, whether it's a single mother or you know, dating problems, or some of which I think we're going to really push the envelope on in terms of my character's uh, personal life. But yeah, there's plenty of stuff there for people to, to, you know, to see it from their own lives, I hope. They're total opposites, but they're like best friends still. They're partners, very close. But um, Pip, uh, Pip's wife feels that McNeil is a bad influence on him. She wants to break him up. But uh, Pip is a totally straight guy. You know, McNeil is the opposite. It was the first script I had read in a long time that made me laugh out loud in my living room by myself. You know, and it's, it's one of those things, like even as the actor, you just try and stay out of the way of the words. The writing is really that fantastic that if, if you don't mess it up, it's going to go just fine. <laughs> It's a lot of fun. I mean, the stuff in between takes is hysterical. Lenny Clark's one of the funniest guys walking around, and when he gets all wound up, it's a, he's just nuts. I mean, I watched Lenny when I was, uh, when I was starting out, and Dennis, uh, No Cure for Cancer, I had that CD, I played the hell out of it, so to be working with him is really fun. He's a very straight-laced, by-the-book kind of guy, you know, let's just get the job done with a sense of humor. I mean, he's got, I mean, his sense of humor is very different than the rest of the guys, I think, you know, he's rather droll. But uh, he has one. <laughs> I don't think I speak for him. Um, I think we kind of have a language and a communication scheme of our own, um, and we're really comfortable with each other. You know, we're trying to we're trying to find that comfort zone between each other, where we actually do speak without actually saying anything. You know, it's all kind of a comfort between each other and and um, and and I think I think like uh, Julian said with with Al his character and to a certain extent my character when I'm around the whole squad we don't really speak that much and since we're the rookies and the new guys on the block we try to let our actions do most of the speaking I have never ever uh, done location shots in a major metropolis, especially New York City, and I thought people would be furious. Most people really enjoy it. You know, they like the fact that we're shooting in their neighborhood, and uh, you know, we try to be as cordial as we can to all the folks because we are taking up their street and we are blocking up and taking parking spaces. But we give them perks in other ways, and uh, they, they've really when they see Dennis. Dennis is, you know, he's universally liked. Uh, 
and it, it, it rubs off, and people have been great to us. So it, it is exciting. You never know where you're going to be next. I'm not a TV guy, so I, I can't say what they would be looking for, or what they would uh, want, but I know that we're just making a show that makes us laugh. Um, you know, as we go through the process of shooting this, we're shooting it like a movie, we're not doing weekly episodes, so we're shooting everything all in over the course of a couple of months. And just like when you're doing a movie, the only thing you can do is hope that it makes you laugh as you're doing it, because that's the best instinct you can have. We've been laughing since day one. So hopefully that's going to carry over and the audience will get it.